It is hard to resist the impression that the present structure of the universe, apparently so sensitive to minor alterations in number, has been rather carefully thought out. The seemingly miraculous occurrence of these numerical values must remain the most compelling evidence for cosmic design. Hello everybody, this is Yiji and welcome back to Project Espa. Today I want to go over a bit of a roadmap of what we will start on with this series, provide a brief overview of specific world building design goals, as well as make a start on actual world building itself. So then, let's get right to it. Roadmap. One of the great things about not starting this world from scratch is that it's relatively easy for me to plan out these first few videos, before my plan eventually inevitably derails. Okay, okay, that sounds a bit cynical. But I think detours are going to be inevitable with a project like this, so when I say derail, I don't actually mean it in a negative way. Detours in world building often only help thicken the world's lore, so to speak. So I'm not going to be too bothered by it when it's going to happen, because it will happen. The only thing I would be bothered by is if it becomes a process of having to go back to fix stuff I already touched again and again and again. For now though, I think we will start with the astronomy world building. Why do I choose to start here? Mainly for two reasons. Firstly, that it's best to work your way inwards from the macro level when world building. In the real world, everything affects everything. And before you can zoom into the small details, you need to paint your big picture. That being the astronomy of your world. Okay, so believe it or not, but I think this is the third time I cover the system of ESPA in a YouTube video. The first time being in 2017, when I started the CWP, and the second time in 2020, over on my now abandoned second channel EG Worldcraft. I'll put some info cards on the screen right now if you would like to check those out, but just be warned that those no longer reflect the canon we're building here. For now though, I'm going to provide a brief overview of the pre-existing solar system of ESPA, and then we're going to dedicate a video to each celestial body detailing it out after. So enough diddly daddling, let's make a star system. Espa is the third planet in a system of nine planets. In order from their parent sun, there is Akundor, a small lava planet without much of a solid crust. Venal, an obvious Venus analogy that has a lot of sulfur. Then there is Espa itself, orbited by five moons. An asteroid belt, separating the inner system from the outer system, a massive Jovian called Manta, with a very fleshed out lunar system, a binary gas giant, dubbed Baron, a white ice giant called Naqua, followed by a ringed Neptunian planet called Thror. Then there is the system's Kuiper belt, and finally, at great distance, a captured rogue planet called Tuvoas. This planetary system orbits a solar analog star called Ojor, which is of slightly lower intensity than the Sun itself. This entire solar system forms then part of a trinary system where Ojur and two distant red dwarfs orbit a common barycenter at great distance. This entire system together I have always referred to as the Axel system, ever since at least 2014, with Ojur being designated Axel Alpha and the red dwarfs Axel Beta and Axel Gamma. Now, these were always intended as working names until I came up with Ojur, but I have never really decided on a final name for the red dwarf pair. Axel Alpha itself I think got inspired by the Double Duck comics I used to read as a child, so there's a little bit of lore there. But the layout of the star system has always revolved around the Red Dwarf binary orbiting at great distance from the primary star Ojor, this as to not disturb the orbits of Ojor's planetary system. So that is the Axel system as I made it. For this series we're going to revisit it and where needed revamp it, sticking to this model as a baseline for our work. A great tool to use for this, and a tool I have previously used to both model CWP ESPA and Worldcraft ESPA, is Space Engine. Space Engine is a digital planetarium you can edit. It has quite a large modding community, so I am by no means the first to discover this, but it allows you to do some amazing astronomy world building. Now the program is free, but apparently you need to buy a license to use it in videos, so keep that in mind if you consider using it for your own projects. 
The license is actually not cheap, so if you guys could hit that subscribe button for me, that would really make me feel a lot better about it. But yeah, using this program, I will be able to get some truly stunning footage of my system, as well as stimulate it in a digital planetarium. There are some alternatives to this program, such as Celestia or Universe Sandbox, but this is the one that has by far the best visuals in my opinion, and also the one I'm most familiar with. So here we go. So having previously modeled the system already, I could just showcase what I have and call it done, but that won't be super interesting I feel. So instead I'm going to completely remodel the system from the ground up, using the old one as reference. I think that will be the most interesting for you guys to watch, and also there are plenty of things I've been putting off fixing with it, so it's a win-win for me to redo it. So the most important thing I want to do with you today is pick a nice spot in Space Engine, where we can model our system. Now, there are a few things I want to look for when searching for such a spot. In the early Celestia versions, I didn't really even put any thought into this, just placing the system about 100 light years away in a random place. But later, during the CWP phase of ESPA, I had put my system near Alnatak and the Horsehead Nebula, which is in my opinion one of the most aesthetic spots in space. However, revisiting this now in 2024, I think this spot is very overwhelming. There's the Horsehead Nebula, the Flame Nebula, and even the Orion Complex, so that might be a bit much going on in the night sky. Also, I think that ties Espa too much to this space's vibe, as I ended up constructing similar fictional nebula. I should note though that I do not consider Espa to be a real physical location, canonically inside our observable universe. There's a lore reason for this, but for now I do not want Espa to be an existing location that could be positioned against the Earth, as I feel that detracts from the fantastical setting. That said, we will need to place the model system in an existing location, because that's just how the program works. Just to get it out of the way though that this is a disclaimer and that ESPA is not an actual real location like that. Current ESPA canon has are located in a dwarf galaxy, akin to the Magellanic Cloud, but I see no reason this can change for example. Browsing around the Magellanic Clouds, I'm not super convinced by the scenery here, so maybe let's look for something else. My main want is to have the system on the edge of stellar space, so that one side of the sky has a bright, visual treat, and the other side just gazes into pitch black intergalactic void. There is several ways to achieve such a view, most of them involve having the system on the edge of an interstellar structure, such as a nebula, a cluster, or even a small galaxy. My main motivation here is to have seasonal contrast in the night sky, where stars only appear for about half the year. Now, all of these potential locations pose some major considerations for the system's ability to create, and even more importantly, sustain life. However, I'm going to cheaply ignore this for now and pass it on as a problem for future EG. Because right now I just want a temporary location for the system, for which I think I prefer the cluster one. Because honestly, I'm a total sucker for this kind of view. Now again, this location is supposed to be not permanent. When I finish the system I'll have a much better idea about the details of what I want, and I'll come back to this for sure. For now though I'm going to place the Barry Center on the outskirts of the Omega Centauri Globular Cluster, but I will definitely come back to ESPA's extrasolar environment after we have modeled the system. Alright then, let's get to the comments. I want to try something new, which is to pick a comment from the last episode and answer it here. And this first one here is by Blew My Mind. Wait, he uploads twice a month now? Yeah, alright, so I'm trying to find my way back to enjoy the process of making videos again, which is kind of why I wanted to start this series on Espa. I want to be careful not to overdo it though and burn myself out again. So don't really expect a schedule out of me like two videos a month. Videos come when they come, and if they come in short succession that just means I'm having a lot of fun with these things. I eased myself back into making videos with the heart map video, and now I'm very excited to get started on doing this Project Espa series. So I hope you will enjoy it alongside me, because that's what I'm looking forward the most, getting to discuss my passion project with you guys. Alright everybody, that will do it for this video. For the next one I think we are going to take a look at the exact makeup of the star system, particularly the red dwarf pair. So if you are interested in that, stick around and subscribe. This has been GG Online, thank you for watching, and I will catch you again in the next one.